summoner necromancer is so back look at uber lilith absolutely vanishing from sanctuary that's not the only thing finally you can push tier 100 dungeons without ever fearing to die unless you're an idiot like me and you just walk into the mob without using a single skill now what changed and how does this actually work first we get the ring of sacrilegious souls which continuously resummons our minions so we don't have to worry if they die if some weird elemental damage takes them out but also we're using the mage glyph which kind of helps to keep our minions alive since their resistances are super bugged still but it's 35 percent plus and they can actually stand in fire explosions without ever going kill tier the build works following you're using infinity mist yes you know the infinity mist where you go into your blood mist and kind of stay infinitely in there but this time we're using infinity mist together with blight corpse tendrils automatic corpse explosions from the sacrilegious ring and aspects to trigger lucky hit the whole time and that lucky hit transfers then into mendon to have our minions overload the enemy now this allows us paired together with good defensive gear to kind of walk through tier 100 dungeons and also not struggle with bosses summon a necro finally works again ladies and gentlemen there's also a little trick slash bug how you can activate mendon even more you do not need that to be tier 100 dungeons or lilith but if you're fighting lilith it kind of makes it even more fun i'll tell you that halfway through skill tree was really tricky because we somehow had to fit minions and survivability plus damage scaling together we begin with reap but we'd never use reap and yes you have to put two points in here because else you can't progress then we're playing blight and here important supernatural blind increases your damage and your minion damage by 15 percent leading to even more mendel damage then hood flash together with five points in blood mist five points are so important for the minimum cooldown and the bonus corpses five points in corpse explosion the same maximum damage and blighted corpse explosion together with fueled by death also you want the point in the scale to warrior mastery to really have them be more healthy we need to crapify for the cooldown reduction with a power to crapify then the bonus scale from mages damage while curse which is again more mendel and more mendel damage here with death embrace and damage reduction as we're continuously blood misting inside the opponents in case we get hit once or twice then there is corpse tendrils and we're using corpse tendrils here as play corpse tendrils for the vulnerable there's a second version without the vulnerable we'll get to that after the gear part and we have one point only in reaper's pursuit and then three gloom three terror one crippling darkness you can change that one point of reaper's pursuit to two by reducing corpse explosion that would be good for uber lilith or if you generally just want to zoom a bit faster through dungeons it generally just really works well with the build and you don't have the points from other wear. Then you want to take Necrotic Carapace and that is really interesting with the Vampiric Powers. Plus we get one point in Inspiring Leader, we can't have more, and then three points in Death Defense for the bonus Armor Rooney. Last but not least, Shadow Blight Key Passive. A thousand times better than Kalen's Addict until Kalen's Addict finally gets reworked into something that's not completely trash. <clears throat> Now the build is centered around the ring of mendel because that's why you play minion for these super banger hits that explode now there's a trick to trigger mendel even more that you don't need a normal dungeon pushing but to delete uber lilith like super crazy or bosses in general and that is the metamorphosis vampiric power you might have seen me use this with my tempest storm builds already with the litless wall when you're dashing through that it always triggers the litless wall seemingly having 100% lucky hit chance well, let's have our minions attack these dummies right and you're seeing there was a random mendel and proc you just they're just doing their damage correct and now i'll do a corpse explosion and that corpse explosion didn't trigger a single mendel right but what happens if i there was one mendel i now dash through with metamorphosis also nothing yet happened correct but there's a dash with metamorphosis oh and that's a bunch of mendel hits huh interesting but now I do Corpse Explosion, and I dash through. And instantly you see Mendel and his. Corpse Explosion, dash through, and instant Mendel hits. Corpse Explosion, dash through, instant Mendel hits. So it's that the Metamorphosis, for some reason, amplifies or puts on such a high lucky hit chance that with a combination of Corpse Explosion and dashing through, you always get an instant trigger of Mendel. Now, use that for bosses as much as you want. 
But in your normal dungeon playthroughs, there's more than enough damage with your sacrilegious soul ring, which gives you the corpse explosion and the corpse tendrils permanently, which also leads to a bunch of staggers straight away, and it resummons your skeletons that they get down, plus lucky hit chance for the Ring of Mendon. I play normal tier 100 dungeons without metamorphosis. Now, interestingly enough, we're also playing the Cult Bringers aspect because we had an aspect free. That is useless damage wise, but it's kind of intriguing to really slow chill freeze all your enemies the whole time. But not only that, this actually scales with Terror to give your minions 16% bonus damage and Mendelon subsequently even more. And it staggers bosses even faster than anything you've ever done ever before, which just keeps them on the ground the whole time and you can just spam them away. Here you want definitely critical strike chance on your gloves, damage over time, ranks to blight, and lucky hit chance would be preferred over willpower. Another key piece is the highest roll of corpse tendrils you can find. You need this to scale Mendel even more. There's an argument between having corpse tendrils on your amulet over the blighted aspect. We'll get to that in a second because corpse tendrils have a higher uptime than the blighted aspect. Whereas I just really like when the damage goes that crazy. Now, if this is on an amulet, it's 30% plus critical strike chance and 60% damage. And this is where we're talking about blighted versus corpse tendrils. This is 180% multiplicative damage on everything you deal, which is kind of cool because it also hires the corpse explosions, the key passive, everything. Here you want gloom passive, then corpse skills, total armor, shadow damage over time. It's just brilliant. I will never find a better amulet. The argument is made. If you have a high roll corpse tendrils, maybe slap that on the amulet and the blighted aspect on your weapon. For the boots, we need the bonus scale to worry us, and it doesn't hurt to get corpse tendrils to just have an even lower cooldown on the corpse tendrils that you can spam them just like crazy, which gives, again, the corpse tendril aspect a bigger argument to really have the crit strike continuously up and the stuns. Then all stats doesn't hurt intelligence, some dodge chance, and or resistance of your choice that's missing. For me, it's cold. For the pens, the most important part is total armor percentage, maximum minion life, and maximum life needed 100%, and then disobedience to stay alive. On the off end, we're playing the one aspect that makes you zoom and trigger even more lucky hit chance. That would be critical strike chance, also maximum minion life and lucky hit chance. Perfect. Doesn't get better apart from high rolls. And then blood mist leaves a desecrated ground trial behind you that also doesn't diminish your movement speed anymore. So you can zoom with this through the enemies, then get out. Have your minions, Lucky Hit Chance, Mendel and Proc, and go crazy. On the chest, you want maximum minion life, maximum life, total armor percentage if possible, and damage reduction from shadow damage over time or any damage reduction. And then there's the skeletal mages or warriors on it. Last but not least would be your helmet with blood mist triggers corpse explosion for the ultimate minimal cooldown with total armor, maximum life. Dexterity is actually really good for the bonus critical strike chance. And then cooldown reduction. Why are we looking so much for critical strike chance? Because not playing Bone Storm takes 20% critical strike chance away from us. That doesn't matter, to be honest, because I have a 20 to 30% standard critical strike chance. With Corpse Tendrils then being on your amulet, you had 60% critical strike chance. And honestly, that's more than enough to consistently trigger Mendel and have good damaging hits going on. We're playing Reapers, even though they're still a bit Corpse Production bugged, but you have your Blight skill to actually help you with that. Then... Shadow Mages, which trigger even more Shadow Bolts, which trigger even more Shadow Blights, so you can get that stacked up 10 times to overwhelm your opponent. And the Golem gets sacrificed for 30% multiplicative critical strike damage. First, the Paragon board, which is super important because we have some nasty glyphs in here. And then I'll show you how to survive in a tier 100 dungeon, what to kind of look out for, and how the boss fight actually works. As you can see here, first, this is the Mage Glyph. For more skeletal mage damage, that's completely useless. But minions gain 35 plus elemental resistance, which makes them completely unkillable against like the fire, lightning, whatsoever damage. It's sadly needed. Alternatively, I would play Amplify in there to get you and your minions 10% bonus damage. That brings us into the Send of Death board. That's very important to happen first because it also has a critical strike node that you do really want. Plus, here's Shadow Damage over time with the Scorch Glyph, which also has you and your minions do more damage. And you can get 60 Intelligence very easy. Now we're going into the right, into the Debt Razor board. And this is really important that you're following this setup. Because as you can see, we're going up here into the leader board again. Then Debt Razor Glyph for the damage reduction. And later, we're getting this Minion Armor and Maximum Minion Life. And the important part is that the Maximum Minion Life that you get, and that's a 20%, is multiplicative on all the Maximum Minion Life you already have. 
This brings us then upwards here into the Wither board. And yes, you do want Wither still because you will do Shadow Damage on the side node. And we're taking here the Darkness Glyph. I wish I could do a little bit more in. Darkness gives us damage reduction, which is really nice to help you and your minions survive even more. And you can get an easy 50 intelligence. Then we're going into the side, into the Flesh Eater board because of the 40% multiplicative damage. And yes, here's another important critical strike note you want to take. It doesn't matter that you're not getting the bonus effect because you just mainly want to have the actual critical strike going on that you get here for free. Here it would be nice to get the bonus damage from elites, but at least you get the bonus ranks and an bonus damage on elements. And easily, there's 126 bonus damage on critical strikes. Important. Only 32 decks. I wish I could take another dex node here, but I simply do not have the points to clap this seven decks. I mean, end of the day, I guess I could remove this and take that one. That's 34 decks. Doesn't really help because I would need one more. But yes, Essence is so important because it gives you also 22% multiplicative increased damage to critical strikes to not healthy enemies. And then we're going down, and this is the going down we're talking about, into the armor clad for the minions to survive even more. Now, if you could weasel out the one or the other points somewhere, I mean, I could probably just say, I mean, an intelligence less for more shadow damage would be worth it, or damage to elites, maybe? Could, could there be a little bit shadow damage? Maybe, maybe critical strike? You know, we're, we're struggling. Maybe 1.5 resistance to all elements less. And then I can take this one because the bonus is so nice. It's another 19.8% on the max level of the Essence Glyph. And yes, this one you want 21 because it's so good. Essence Glyph is one of the few ones where it's worth it to put more points into. Because every more point here, this is plus 154. And then multiplicative times the 90% bonus that we're getting anyways. Which brings us up to 513 critical strike damage. And that times 40% right now or times 90%, or times 60%. And that times 60% right now, if you have it on the amulet. Now there's a case to be made to put this on the amulet instead of the blighted aspect, because you would go from 40% to 60% multiplicative, and also from 20% critical strike chance to 30, could be worth it. <sighs> For the vampiric powers, these are very highly interchangeable and I haven't found the perfect combination yet. One you need is Flowing Veins. Flowing Veins is unquestionable, more shadow damage over time, it's perfect. Then also you want Feed the Coven because that restores your essence periodically to have you spam out more blights while you automatically get Corpse Explosion which also gives you more essence, but your damage gets hired by 10%, flat. And that's whoever you're fighting against. Bosses, elites, everywhere. 10% more damage on your Mendel hits. It gets followed up by Prey on the Weak which is another 16% multiplicative against vulnerable enemies and you have them continuously vulnerable with your corpse tendrils, so these are set in stone. Now again, you could take Metamorphosis to have this super Mendel and crit staggered stack stack against bosses. Normal dungeon mobs, you don't really need it. And then last but not least, Undying to continuously soak yourself life ways up. But what I have noticed and I like really much is not playing Metamorphosis and instead playing Zanguin Brace. Because when you kill an enemy, fortify you for 6% of your base life, cool. But while you have more Fortify than half of your maximum life, you gain another 8% critical strike chance, which kind of works really nice into this build to just get you even more critical strike chance. And you're not using a bug to make this work. Now let's take Goa Ruins because that's a good one to run through, even though it has melee defenders that take 40% less damage. <sighs> Fantastic. As a potion, I usually recommend armor or maximum life. Armor is preferable because it kind of pushes your armor value even further up, uh, but life also does do a good trick. Now, the most important thing to do is before you engage, always curse something, and then you just blood mist in. As you can see, my cooldown is already ticking down. My minions are going in. We have them trigger Ring of Mendon, and then we just go on. Next pack of minions, curse. Walk around them further. Curse everything, blood mist in. Have your minions slowly catch up, pull everything together, curse them again, one, two, corpse explosion, go in. Your minions walk in, trigger Ring of Mendel, and there's a couple of millions you saw. Every crit you see is essentially Ring of Mendel, more or less, and you dash through him. And if you have Metamorphosis, you would trigger even more Mendel, and you curse this thingy, go in before it kind of blasts you with his Shadow Wave, right? Have your minions walk up, again, corpse tendrils, corpse tendrils, and that's where I'm saying, like, Maybe Corpse Tendrils with a bonus crit would be worth it because you're doing them so often. You have the cooldown so often that it just would make your Mendel dudes even Mendel harder. 
New blood missed again because that is bonus chance to just... Oh, almost died to Frost. Almost died to Frost again. Everything dead. Leviathan's Maw. On we go. My cold resistance is atrocious, FY. As you notice, we kind of survive everything. We're not really much in danger of dying unless I'm stupid and run into elemental damage. And we're continuously safe. That's the most important part. Like, nothing nothing can really kill us. Even in this big room here now, we go in. You know? Blood mist. Pull everything together. Corpse explosions. Blood mist. Go through. Go out again so we don't die. Well, that dude is just running away. Then blood mist. Now, we haven't used Blight much, right? Because as you're zooming through, you don't really use it the most time. But here we pull everything together, and then we just spam Blight from the side to reduce our cooldown further. You can even engage with Blight too, so you can curse. Then you throw a couple of Blights in, and then you Blood Mist. So you don't always have to start with the Blood Mist. You can also like engage from the distance if that is what you feel a bit safer with. And it essentially allows you to just get already some initial corpses in. It allows you to get your... Blood Mist cooldown reduced in case it is still on cooldown here. Here, one, two, three, and go out of the wave so it doesn't kill you, right? Pull everything together, and now we're going to the boss and show you the boss. And now again, I have the Metamorphosis power in my backpack, right? So we'll start the fight without Metamorphosis, and then I might die or slot it just in in between just to show you the difference. So we're spamming her with Blight, then instantly Blood Mist, and then you're essentially just corpse tendriling, corpse tendriling, 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 blood mist, and you go on. And you're hoping for Mendel procs that she just gets destroyed, and you're also getting good Mendel procs in between. Then she gets staggered, and she takes a lot of damage, and your minions are back there fighting, procking Mendel like they're lucky, and, like, you know, she dies, and you're not even able to ever die yourself. Now, how does it work with Metamorphosis? Curse, blight, 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 blight. Then we dash through, and that dash actually triggers more Mendon. But keep in mind, you can't just infinitely dash through, because your minions actually need to, you know, attack to, to make that work. And also, don't forget to still use your other attacks that can all trigger Lucky Hit. Then you dash through, and again, a higher chance for Mendon, or more or less a guaranteed Mendon. And you just notice how she just chunks down vastly faster. Uh, still, though, you're kind of, again, relying on, on a bug to like carry you with your Mendon and against Uberlith it makes sense because you want to have like this this super wanger banger hit that kind of allows you to skib the most part of the boss fight um but against like a normal dungeon boss yeah I mean choose your poison use what you want to use like go go for the go for the skills you want to go for but you, you, you can get her down with this as well. You, you don't look like you don't need the the metamorphosis super slapper to actually make it work. Choose your poison, you know, do you want to do it or not? Yes, other builds might still be faster, but this is the most working minion build right now. Rather interested in massive damage and absolute tankiness. That is the sacrilegious storm.